Now that we've seen the entire roster for the Chaos Dwarfs, it's time to talk about what is missing. What don't we have? What is not there? In this video today, we're going to go through things on a pretty low tech ability. I'm just going to be showing off a of Google Doc. I've pulled a number of things from Tamarcom, from the third or fourth edition Chaos Dwarf book, third edition book from White Dwarf, tons of stuff. So we're going to go through those things here today, talk about some lords, heroes, and units that are not in the roster, and just kind of have some fun speculation on what that might be like and so on and so forth. Um, if you have not yet pre-ordered the Chaos Dwarf DLC, you can do so using the link to my uh, Creative Assembly affiliate link. You'll get that 10% discount that is also preserved for a week after launch. So if you want to wait for some uh, reviews or whatnot, please feel free to do so. You can also quickly navigate to any part of the video that interests you the most using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. Lastly, don't forget to check me out on Twitch where I will be streaming the Chaos Dwarf DLC and doing giveaways uh, during the early access period leading up to launch on April 13th. You can find that linked in the description and pinned comment as well. But let's get started here on the missing units of the Chaos Dwarfs. Starting us off with Lords and Heroes. Let's look at what we got here. So the Chaos Dwarf Lord and the Sorcerer Lord are what we've got, basically. Basically, right? It's called a Sorcerer Prophet in the later editions. And the Overseer takes the place of the Chaos Dwarf Lord. But we also had a Bull Centaur Lord. That would have had some additional benefits here, right? Being a little bit faster on the move. Uh, higher weapon, well, medium weapon skill between the two. Um, better strength and toughness, though. Higher initiative, better attacks, lower leadership. So this thing would not necessarily um, be any kind of mountable lord, you know, because it is a centaur. But it would just be a nice way to have kind of a, a dedicated soul cav lord because it is a bull centaur. Um, the likelihood of us getting a bull centaur lord is unlikely unless we got a bull centaur legendary lord that would then kind of fall in, fall in line saying, hey, here is that generic version of that bull centaur. In addition to, we have a chaos dwarf hero. So here are some of the old heroes that we had. Um, this is sixth edition ravening hordes. And this gives us the Chaos Dwarf Hero, the Chaos Dwarf Sorcerer, which would be your Demon Smith, uh, your Bull Centaur Hero, which would be the uh, whatever the, the Tower of Pada Khan, whatever it is called, and the Hobgoblin Hero, which would be the Hobgoblin Khan, I believe they, they eventually called it. And the Chaos Dwarf Hero would just simply be an Overseer as a hero. We get the Infernal Castellian, but that is definitely more of a ranged unit. He does have a Fire Glaive, um, but, and he cannot be on a mount. Whereas this character would kind of be like that. It would have a, a, a limited mount range probably. Um, it would be interesting to see a Chaos Dwarf hero or um, a Chaos Dwarf demon smith actually have a war machine as a mount. Right, and it, maybe not the Dreadquake Mortar or something like that, but maybe they can just have like a Skull Taker as a mount for the Chaos Dwarf hero, giving it a lot more punching power. Just in the same way that we get plenty of other heroes that have chariots, or maybe we get the uh, the hero, the, the Demon Smith on the Iron Demon, using the Carronade to kind of do a lot of damage there. So I would really like to see that as an option. Uh, having that generic Chaos Dwarf hero is something that we always we always get that generic like. Combat hero later. Dark Elf Master being a really good example. Um, the Black Orc boss. The war boss is the big one. Big boss. It's a big boss. Uh, the Black Orc hero <laughs> uh, for the Greenskins. Plenty of other like kind of additions to the roster that are just that generic combat hero that would fill that kind of slot. But those are our lords and heroes that could be added possibly to the game in future DLCs, future FLCs, future events, anything of the sort. But probably one of the biggest units that to talk about is coming up here next. It is the Chaos Siege Giant. And something that would also be usable for the Warriors of Chaos. This was in the Tamarcon book, and it was a pretty devastating beast. Um, you have five movements, four weapon skill, three ballistic skills, six strength, five toughness, six wounds, eight or that's a three initiative and a special attack and, and leaders or 10 leadership so here are all the rules for this bad boy so it had special siege armor so it had a really really nice save but it had a higher save against shooting attacks so you can kind of see that equated as oh okay it has either like a silver shield built into its armor profile or like a really high missile resistance which could be a really cool way to do it there's the fall over that giants had to deal with which was a whole like unnecessary bag of bundles when it came to um uh what's it called uh rules 
the siege giant attacks. So listen to this. Giants don't attack in the same manner as other creatures, being too large, fract fractious, and the ease and the case of the chaos tainted and multi and mutilated siege giants too insane to carry out a coherent plan of attack. In order to determine what a chaos siege giant does in each close combat phase, pick a unit in base contact with the giant and roll a d6, applying the result shown on the, fellow, the following table, which you which table you use depends on the size of the giant's victim. So you then have a bunch of rules where it's like, okay, are you attacking a small size thing or a larger size thing? Um, then you've got leg breaker, smash them with pick, ed butt or yell and brawl, yell and ball, smash them with pick, flail and crush and ripping blades. And I think that could be kind of cool is to have some sort of damage profile very similar to maybe the, um, because a lot of the Chaos Dwarf have like cascading effects, right? The longer you're in, you're in close combat, the more damage you do, the more units you kill. So if they had something kind of like the, uh, the Black Coach, where the longer they're in effect, they get a different version of the Leg Breaker, Smash and Pick, or Ed Butt, whatever it is, uh, they just get that cascading damage effect. So their damage profile does change the longer they're in combat, very similar to the rest of the Chaos Dwarf um, army. And then you could just slap this with the Warriors of Chaos as well. Um, it could be very, very fun. Upgrades with the Rune of Hate and Scaling Spikes. Um, it would definitely be like a Siege Attacker and being able to just kind of smash apart walls. But I think having this this huge, massive, giant covered head to toe in, in armor with these big blades on its arms and stuff like that would be so sick to see. So sick to see. Again, this would be something for the Chaos Dwarfs. Let's go back to its actual picture. It's so cool. It'd be something for the Chaos Dwarfs, but it's something you could definitely just pop into the Warriors of Chaos or any other chaotic faction that could take advantage of it rather than just the kind of generic uh, giant that you get here and there. Here it is again. This is in the Storm of Magic supplement, um, which allowed you to kind of bring these big baddies to the table, Rune of Hate and Scaling Spikes. Uh, the Tamarcon, I think, came out in, oh, I want to say, 7th or between 7th and 8th. Uh, the Storm of Magic was an 8th edition supplement, so this would be probably the most updated rules for the Chaos Siege Giant prior to the End Times, unless they actually did a Siege Giant in the End Times that I can't remember, but this would probably be the, the most up-to-date rules again. And they haven't changed, right? Like 5-up armor save, or otherwise 3-up against shooting attacks, stuff like that. Now another War Machine, if you want to consider that a War Machine, is the Hobgoblin Bolt Thrower, which would be pretty fun, pretty cool. Um, and you could kind of have this very similar to the spear chucka from the orcs and goblins, which, you know, we, 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 we want, and this could be a different way to just kind of incorporate more hobgoblin stuff into the military. Now we've know that you get, or you get the hellforge, you get contempt, uh, bound fire demon, not bound fire demon. Um, the other one, uh, there's the three things that all of the war machines have. Well, this wouldn't have that. And this would be like a tier one war machine. It'd be cheap. It'd be, it'd be easy to get into. They have a bonus versus large. I don't think it would have like the full bolt thrower characteristic that, um, say, the high elves do. I think the, the dwarf ballista is just a single fire mode. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I think that maybe this one just has a bonus versus large to make it a very affordable, easy to break into war machine that you can put into the roster that is a very conventional war machine as it pertains to the other factions in the in the uh, the game, right? This is more like your already existent bolt thrower in other factions. But an old 4th edition Chaos Dwarf uh, roster choice here with the Hop Goblin Bolt Thrower. And here's the Goblin Spear Chucka as well, um, just to kind of see that, that, that difference there. That little, uh, that little ditty. Now another one is the Doom Engine. Now the Doom Engine looks like the Chaos Dwarf Towers do in their Siege, like their siege Towers. From the, uh, uh, all the gameplay footage we've seen already when they do Sieges, they, the Doom Engine looks like this and that's what the chaos dwarf tower looks like so i think that that's kind of it's like a sideways step like it doesn't look exactly like this but it looks very very similar and it could be a way to just kind of include this in the battlefield i don't know necessarily if they would do this um it could be something very similar to age of mythology right like a heliopolis like thing that you have just kind of moving around the uh, battlefield um but maybe it's something that's exclusive to sieges what i would have liked to have seen is more variety in the siege options for factions, especially factions like the dwarfs, the chaos dwarfs, factions that are known for being good at dealing with sieges and, and, and siege work and stuff like that. I mean, we've we've wanted for ages, right, being able to emplace gunpowder units onto walls and, and parapets and whatnot. And it's kind of unfortunate we don't have that. 
But I think having some type of different siege towers or different uh, battering rams or even having entirely different things to choose from when it comes to sieges could be a really cool way to differentiate play when it comes to dealing with these minor settlements and these siege battles you do have to fight in the campaign. But the Doom Engine is one of them, therefore the Chaos Dwarfs. Um, it's, I just wanted to show it off. It's, it's a, it is a definite tall order, but it is one nonetheless I wanted to kind of... Um, Show off. Now, the Chaos Dwarf Herodons are really cool here. Now, they're kind of a little bit like um, Slayers, similar. I'm going to read this little blurb here, and I, I think that's the only one I got here. So, the other humans were busy fighting the robed acolytes. Each of the bald dwarfs had seized a heavy hammer and followed their thane into battle. The Northmen were shocked to find that their foes were women. Dwarf mothers too old to produce children, their only purpose now was to defend the temple of their unforgiving god. They wielded their hammers with the maddened zeal of fanatics, the burned stumps of their tongues wriggling in silent cries of hate. Seldom had the veteran marauders ever battled foes who fought with such crazed disregard for their own lives as these viragos. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? Don't know. Korak's hideous face grinned as he saw the dwarf Herodons take down one of the humans, bringing him low with a bone-crushing blow to his leg. The Thane wasn't overly concerned that two of the acolytes had died on the Northman's blade to get that close to him. To his thinking, the Baron... Virgos, so yeah, that, that word again, man. Virgos were almost as worthless as a hobgoblin in the grand scheme of things. The dwarf's monetary distraction as he watched Stefnir fall before the acolytes gave Wolfric the opportunity he had been, wait, been watching for. Clenching his fangs, Wolfric suddenly sprang at the gloating Thane. His blade scraped across the steel gorget the dwarf wore, failing to find the weak joint between neck and breastplate. As his sword turned, Wolfric twisted his hand, slamming the crosspiece into Korak's face. The dwarf howled in pain as his ugly visage was smashed into the bruised wreckage. This is from Wolfric by C.L. Werner. So, to have a kind of elite heavy infantry unit, you can have this kind of more along the lines of a slayer, right? In that kind of like zealousness that has like a, a death blow capability. Maybe it does have a guardian trait and it's meant to kind of kind of run toe to toe with a hero or a lord, very similar to what we get with a lot of the other uh, guard units. And when I say that, I mean like Phoenix Guard, Temple Guard, uh, all the like the 50 million uh, Tomb Guard, 50 million guard units that are existent in a Warhammer Fantasy. So maybe they could exist in that scope, being things that either dual wield hammers or a single one hand, I'm sorry, a single two handed hammer as that kind of role of being a heavier elite unit that is um, very zealous, very kind of just throw them against things and have them just kind of rip into them and in a different kind of, very similar again to the Slayer in that scope, but obviously a little bit more of a heavy approach. But that is your Herod in here. Um, and I, I think that the Dwarf Infantry line is is scary. It is scary. The Infernal Firesworn, Ironsworn are so damn good. And the Immortals are cool as a... Um, as a damage dealing version of them. So it could be cool to kind of have this unit as a damage dealing version of them with maybe a little less armor and less melee defense. So it's a little more balanced, a higher melee attack, a better weapon strength profile. Well, they already have a pretty good one, but a even better weapon strength profile with maybe bonus versus infantry and AP damage, similar to the immortals in some way, shape or form, but now having do a, a similar doom seeker or death blow ability that those, um, that those slayers would have. I think that'd be a really cool way to kind of incorporate these guys again with that guardian trait. Into the dwarf bazooka, which was a ridiculous option way back when. Now, you can see that. Look at that old school art. Like, this is what, like, second edition Warhammer 40K looked like uh, with these little cool little unit cards that um, harken back and came now into the more recent versions of 40K, right? They back to these kind of cool looking little unit cards. Um, but it could be very similar to. Uh, troll hammer torpedoes, you know, it doesn't need to be an actual true like bazooka that shoots in a straight line But maybe that's how you differentiate to it um, But it's introduced in third edition brought back in the lore of the eighth edition Tamarcon supplement as well So you can see that this thing it does exist in the kind of current um, Continuum and I think it could be, it'd be really sick if you do kind of have it as a uh, uh, a Tamarcon I'm sorry, not Tamarcon, a, a troll hammer torpedo style of weapon that does AP damage, bonus versus large, just kind of shooting um, with a limited range here, right? This thing's not going to have 145, give it like a 90 meter range or maybe give it like a 60 meter range. You want this just behind your front line to lob into incoming uh, large infantry. Do 
the dwarfs truly have like do the cast dwarfs truly have like an opening in their in their uh in their range line that they need something like this no no, I definitely think with the blunderbuss and the fire glaive and the millions of other uh, range damage you get from your war machines and your hobgoblin archers, you got pretty much everything covered. But I still think that this is a really cool thing that you could actually add into the uh, the military to give it a little bit more explosive punch in that kind of midfield. Oh, God, it's kind of sick. But then you get the Chaos Dwarf Colossus here with swivel guns. This thing is wild. This thing is wild. It's very Dread Saurian. It's huge. This thing is a massive, massive thing. Take a look in a book, Reading Rainbow. There you go. That's what this thing would look like. Very slow, very lumbering, right? You know how the Feral Dread Saurian doesn't have a howdah on the back, but the other ones do? That very similar thing right here. And you'd have like, you know, dwarf snipers on the top. Uh, basically, I'd probably say fire glaives to take advantage of the fact that they're in there just kind of shooting and dumping on the stuff. Um, I, I think that having more things that have a dual purpose or having this kind of fun stance on stuff. It's why I really think that the dwarfs need a thunder barge that is not just simply a, oh, it's a dirigible. I want it to have like an emplaced cannon, an organ gun, give it some extra spice so it can have a little more fun than just simply being what it is. I would envision this thing if it came into the game being very, very slow moving and cumbersome, not necessarily meant to be in combat and using its weight in combat, but slow moving, prodding, just kind of using its its armament on its back more so than its actual characteristic. If it does get in close combat, it can actually swipe things around and stuff like that and still shoot from the back, but it's just another thing to kind of show off. Again, do I think that the roster needs something like this? No, but is it sick as hell? Goddamn right it is. <laughs> so I just wanted to show that little bad boy off. Um, man, like, look at that. Look at that. Oh, God. Fan made kit bash. Grudge Bear by... It, so, yeah, this was in uh, Grudge Bear. Forgot to mention that. Which is this little bit with Barundin. Which is a great book. If you've not read Grudge Bear and you, you are a fan of the dwarfs, it is one of my favorite Warhammer Fantasy books next to Burning Shore. And you know how I am a High Elf fan. Um, I do love that Tyrion and Teclis trilogy. Now, you also have the Black Orcs to deal with. And... Um, I just don't think we would get them. Uh, and as I mentioned right here, like CA seems to have followed the Tamarcon lore with how the Black Orcs were all ejected from the Chaos Dwarf Empire following their unsuccessful rebellion against their creators. I mean, the Black Orcs went wild <laughs> on the Chaos Dwarfs. Hence, they're not part of their forces anymore due to their severe unreliability. And I'll read this little blurb here for you guys. But they weren't in the roster um, that we've seen, right? And... I, it's it's true to form like they're not in the game they were in the fourth edition roster and this is how tamarcon kind of dealt with it and i i think that's good i don't think we need black orcs um and i think it's it's better that we don't probably because i think it kind of creates a little bit of infantry bloat where it's like okay if i've got the laborers and then i've got my dwarf warriors and then i've got my infernal guard and then i got my infernal fire sworn where do the black orc really fit into that outside of just simply being a two-handed shock troop where I already get Infernal Guard and Chaos Warriors with great weapons. I, I I think that the Black Orcs not being in the roster is a good is a good thing. So let's take a look at this little lore blurb. It's our last thing to really talk about before closing things out. The Black Orcs. Certain arcane lore and blasphemous history state an apocryphally that state apocryphally that many centuries ago the dark arts of the Chaos Dwarf sorcerers sought to create a new breed of slave by means of blood magic and infernal power. They already, of course, possessed tens of thousands of orcs and goblin slaves, but at best they were unruly, fractious, and inefficient, lacking their useful intelligence of humans or the sheer stamina of ogres. The new breed were to be powerful warriors in battle and able workers in the most hostile parts of their benighted realm, inferior to their masters and obedient to their will, but superior in every regard from their common orc, of common orc stock from which they were created. The great experiment worked at first, but the Chaos Dwarfs soon can't to realize that they are new orc breed, dark-hued and hulking, while both far tougher and stronger than their slave stock, were also far too independently minded to make good slaves. Indeed, their steadiness of will and brutal clarity of purpose compared to common orcs was itself a dire cause for concern, and not long after their numbers swelled and spread, these black orcs began to revolt, and even organize other greenskins into obeying their will rather than that of their chaos dwarf masters. 
Some believe that in refining the Black Orcs, the Chaos Dwarfs had also unwittingly concentrated the Orcs' own bellicose nature and love of battle to untamable heights, while some suggest that something of the arrogant desire to dominate and destroy that festered in the hearts of the Chaos Dwarfs themselves had somehow... Something... Tra transferred, that's it's transferred, and taken root in their progeny. In any case, the Chaos Dwarfs were soon troubled by revolt after revolt and were best were beset on all sides by a powerful and deadly enemy of their own creation. In the greatest and final revolt, near civil war broke out. The Chaos Dwarfs were besieged with their own weapons and Tsar Nagron itself became a battleground. The Droth Zari hovered at the precipice of destruction. Until aided by the perfidious treachery of the hobgoblins against their kin, the Black Orcs were finally defeated and cast out and driven from the Chaos Dwarf Empire at great cost. The experiment has never been repeated. So the Chaos Dwarfs almost died to the Black Orc rev uh, revolt. So I think kind of taking this stance, keeping them from the uh, roster was a good take on it. But this concludes here, the missing units of the Chaos Dwarfs. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think any of these units really have a place in a roster that seems like all-stars? Like the roster seems so goddamn strong. For those of you that watch hockey, it's like the first time the Vegas Golden Knights came out. They had a bunch of like new bros on the team and a bunch of old veterans. And you put that skill pool together and it really just popped off. It's the same thing here. We have a bunch of old things that are coming back from the older lore, like Chaos Dwarf Warriors, mixed in with a lot of the cool things from Tamarcon, like the Infernal Guard, to just make this all-star Chaos Dwarf roster here. So I'm really, really stoked on it. Let me know what you think. Do you think we need Herodans? Do you think we need <laughs> this big bad boy? Lots of fun things that could have possibly existed for the Chaos Dwarfs in the roster. I think the stuff that I would like to see the most of everything we talked about would be things like a, a generic Chaos Dwarf warrior or maybe a Bull Centaur Lord. I think those things add a little bit more fun and variety versus trying to shoehorn in something that kind of already exists as far as its use case in the roster as is but as always guys thank you so much for watching here today don't forget to check me out on twitch and be prepared for plenty more chaos dwarf content to come but have a good one and take care